Amen. Amen. What a, what a tremendous song. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Samuel chapter number 2. 2 Samuel chapter number 2. Appreciate your prayers for your pastor as far as my voice, but I tell you, uh, it, uh, it is getting much better. It's not 100%, but I would say it's probably 95%, 90, 95%, something like that. If you would have heard it uh, one, a week ago, Tuesday, um, and uh, it just sounded awful. And then... Uh, uh, that Wednesday I preached and it still wasn't 100% back, but it was starting to uh, get on the healing side. And then Sunday and uh, didn't crack or anything like that. I was expecting it to kind of give way and it uh, didn't, but praise the Lord. And uh, so, uh, but anyway, Second Samuel chapter number two. Let's stand and show respect to the reading of God's word. If you cannot understand, you may remain seated. But if we could stand and show respect as we read Second Samuel chapter number two. We're going to read uh, verse number one. We'll have a word of prayer and then we'll get right into the message uh, here tonight. 2 Samuel chapter number two and uh, looking there at verse number one. I got to clean my glasses here. Just a second. There we go. All right. Now I can see better. 2 Samuel chapter number two, uh, two, verse number one, it says, And it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up? into any of the cities of Judah. And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said unto him, Hebron. I entitled the message tonight, Inquiring of the Lord. Inquiring of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for each one that's here tonight. Lord, we uh, do ask that the power of your Holy Spirit would be here in this place. Lord, speak to our hearts and challenge us. And Lord, I pray that it would be evident that we've met with you, with, with you here tonight. And Lord, I pray that you would just uh, guide and direct my lips. And, and uh, Lord, I, I just pray that you would just uh, do a mighty work in our midst here. And Lord, speak to our hearts and challenge us. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to realize how important it is to inquire of you. Lord, I know that the message does not contain anything about uh, salvation, but Lord, perhaps there's somebody here either struggling with their salvation or Lord, maybe they're, they're not saved. Lord, I pray that you'd speak to their heart about that need and Lord, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, bless our, our time together. Lord, bless your word, bless your people. Lord, I pray that you'll be honored and glorified in all that we say and do. In Jesus' precious name we pray and for his sake. And all of God's people said... Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Inquiring of the Lord. Inquiring of the Lord. You know, uh, Wednesday nights we uh, tend to have uh, prayer time and, and uh, um, we sometimes do corporate prayer where we have maybe just uh, 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 people break up into prayer groups and then we have sometimes, uh, you know, just a couple of men pray. Sometimes it's just one man, just depends on time and, and all that, depends on how long-winded your pastor is, amen, uh, the speaker is. Although some, sometimes some speakers only speak for like 15 minutes and then you have an hour to, to be able to uh, pray, so, uh, but... Uh, I don't think he caught that tonight. Amen, Brother Ford. <laughs> Amen. But in all reality, and by the way, I appreciate him filling the pulpit for your pastor. But in all reality, the, the goal of a Christian should be to inquire of the Lord of anything and everything. Um, there should never be decisions you make in your life. You know, uh, too many times I think people make decisions based on, you know, well, how does everybody feel about this? Uh, you know, they'll, they'll uh, put it on social media. Um, you know, they'll uh, ask everybody else's opinion, but they fail to ask the Lord. We have an awesome opportunity and privilege to be able to go right before our Heavenly Father in prayer. We, we have that ability. We, we talked about this just recently uh, in the fact that we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is we have direct access to God the Father. We, we can do that through, uh, through, of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's in prayer that we're able to talk to him and we're able to inquire of him. And, and, uh, but we all need to uh, uh, you know, inquire of God or ask him for his guidance in all areas of our life. 
David is a great example for us to learn from. He, he had learned to be sensitive to, to the Lord and knew that without God, he was nothing. He, he knew that uh, the, there was an importance of seeking the face of God uh, no matter what he was uh, to encounter. And we too can learn uh, from his example as we learn to inquire of the Lord. I've just got four things here tonight uh, that hopefully will be a help and encouragement to each of you. First of all, number one, he inquired for direction. He inquired for direction. Look back in our text there. Notice in the beginning of this verse, it says there, and it came to pass after this that David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up? into any of the cities of Judah, and, uh, and, and the Lord said unto him, go up. You know, uh, it's interesting that uh, he was willing to say, Lord, I, I want to know where you want me to do. Uh, uh, Lord, I need direction. And, and if you were to look back in uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 1 and verse number 1 real quick like, You'll see he had been in Ziklag, and it says there, and uh, now came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in, where? Ziklag. Right there in the scripture. He was in Ziklag, and, and Ziklag had been a place of, of one of the lowest points in David's life. Look back again, uh, turn back just a couple more pages uh, to 1 Samuel chapter number 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And I want you to notice with me there verse number 6. 1 Samuel chapter number 30 and verse number 6. And David was greatly, what? Distressed. For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You know, uh, this is a, a point that, uh, uh, you know, he, uh, he's just at his lowest point. By the way, all the men that had been following him, uh, they were the ones that were talking. There wasn't, uh, you know, some strangers that were talking about stoning him. We're talking about people that knew him, fought with him, bled with him, was willing to die for him. And all of a sudden they come to Ziklag and everything's burned, everything's gone. And they're like, well, you know, hey, it's David's fault. Let's stone David. David sitting there, he's uh, greatly distressed, the Bible tells us, and, and uh, he's, he's sad by what uh, is happening. And, and uh, you know, here there, his own, uh, own friends, his own, uh, uh, you know, if, if it was the enemy, we'd know they'd want to stone him, amen? But we're talking about people that were close to him, and it was a, a low point in his life. And then we see something else that David did at the latter part of that verse. I know I read it already, but it says there, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He didn't sit there and just uh, focus on the distress. He didn't focus on you know, the men speaking of, of stoning him. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. We too must uh, continually, though, go to the Lord for direction. Don't ever make a decision based upon emotion. I mentioned this recently. Yes, we have emotions. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. You know, uh, some days I'm happy. Amen. Uh, most days I'm happy. Uh, once in a while I'm sad, you know, uh, especially when we, uh, you know, uh, have to deal with snow. And praise the Lord, I'm hoping that we don't have to deal with that again. Amen. I wasn't going to say that four-letter word again. Amen. But we may have to deal with that. We live in Wisconsin. So, so the reality of it, though, you know, and when it, when it does, <clears throat> that white stuff comes down, amen? When it does happen, I'm sad because it's like, oh, man, why do we, got, we got more of this. And, and I just don't want to deal with it, amen? I'm, I've been very, very grateful this year. We've, we've been very fortunate, amen, uh, that we've not had much snow. But, you know, the problem with a lot of Christians is they're controlled by their emotions, our decisions shouldn't be made based upon our emotions, but they should be bathed in prayer. Instead of making an emotional decision, David inquired uh, of the Lord for direction, even in Ziklag. Look back in our text there in second, uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And I want you to notice in verse number 8 and 9. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, 
for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the 600 men that uh, were with him, and came to the brook uh, Besor, uh, where those that uh, were left behind stayed. Then skip down to verse number 19, and it says, And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughter, daughters, uh, neither spoil nor uh, anything that, uh, that they had taken to them, David, what? Recovered all. You know, he inquired of the Lord and he said, Lord, should I go go after this troop? Should I, you know, should I pursue them? When you ask the Lord for direction, it will never be contrary to his word. I, I just, uh, I, I, I don't know. As a pastor, I many times cringe when I hear people say, well, God told me, and then uh, they proceed to say something that had nothing to do with the Lord. And there is no way in God's green earth that God told them that because it goes contrary to God's word. And the problem is, is they, they try to justify in their minds. They'll get other people's opinions and, and say, uh, you know, do you think I made the right decision? Don't you think that? And, and you know, I know uh, uh, when, uh, I remember when COVID hit, uh, you know, I, I had talked with the deacons and council men and we had talked about uh, some plans and, and uh, then uh, uh, the Lord just uh, really smote my heart. And we had already talked about, you know, well, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, we had talked about the de- with the deacons and councilmen of, of uh, just having one service on Sundays and then, uh, you know, one service on Wednesday night. And we had talked about that, I think it was like uh, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. I don't remember what day it was, but of that week. And we were having service on Sunday. And the Lord that night just smoked my heart and said, hey, you didn't ask me. I was like, I'm so sorry, Lord. And I began to pray and I asked, Lord, what should we do? And the Lord said, have Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So I, uh, I got up, made an announcement, and I said, okay, hey, this is what we're going to do. I had a couple of deacons call me. I said, Pastor, I thought we discussed this. I said, yep, but I prayed. This is what the Lord told me to do. And they said, okay. You and I have got to be, as, as Christians, be willing to go to the Lord and inquire of him for direction. Amen. By the way, he's going to give you direction. He's not going to give it to you in, on some billboard. Amen? He's going to give it to you right here in his map book for life. The problem with so many Christians, they, they make decisions, as I said, based upon their emotions, based upon uh, uh, their circumstances. But when you ask the Lord, you, uh, uh, he'll certainly give you directions. David, as king, even inquired of the Lord as to what direction he should go. And the Lord had told him, hey, go up there in our text there in uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter number 2, verse number 1. He says, hey, shall I go up uh, into the uh, cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, go up. Hey, this is the direction. I want you to go. Amen. Christian. Go up, go forward, go in the direction that the Lord uh, uh, is wanting you to go. Amen. Proverbs chapter number three, verse number five and six says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and what? He shall direct thy paths. The problem with so many Christians, they don't want, they don't want God to show them uh, the direction. They want to they wanna be in the you know, pilot seat. They want to be in the driver's seat. They want to be the one in control. And I don't want God telling me which direction I need to go. Christian, you need to let God take uh, control of the wheel and get over in the passenger seat and let God take, uh, uh, take uh, you in the right direction. But uh, you need to inquire for direction. Oh, we see there, number one, he inquired for direction. Number one, he inquired for direction. Number two, he inquired for destination. He inquired for destination. Look back in our text there again, if you would. In uh, second, uh, uh, second, uh, second Samuel chapter number two and verse number one. Yes, your pastor forgot to put his phone on vibrate. Amen. I am human. Second Samuel chapter number two, verse number one. It says, And David said, Whither shall I go up? And he said unto him, Where? Hebron. Hebron. You know, David inquired of the Lord for a destination, and the Lord said to go to Hebron. 
Hebron was a city that Caleb had claimed and God gave to him uh, for his faithfulness and, and a good report that was given in the wilderness. If you were to look all the way back to Joshua chapter number 14, verse number 14, for the sake of time, we're not going to go there. But uh, if you were to look back there, remember Caleb comes to that city and he says, hey, I want that mountain. Remember that? Here he was, he was 80, what is he, 84 or 85? I think he was 85 years old. And uh, he said, hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm just as strong as I was, you know, when I was in my 40s. And, and uh, you know, God gave him that mountain. Can you imagine, you know, Mrs. Hal, we're not going to tell you how old she is tonight. But uh, at 83 years old, could you imagine Mrs. Hallett taking a hill and saying, hey, I want that city and God's going to give it to me. Some of you would be like, uh, she can barely drive her car. That's what I'm going to say, amen? I'm not mocking my mom. I'm just being real here, amen? But the reality of it, can you imagine God saying, hey, I'm going to give you a whole city. And there is, there's Caleb going up and taking that city, Hebron, Amen. Here it was, a, a city that uh, uh, God was able to give to him. And, and by the way, Hebron was one of the designated cities of refuge. If you look back in uh, Joshua chapter number 21, I'm gonna, again, for the sake of time, not going to go there. But uh, look back in Joshua chapter number 21. Hebron was one of the designated cities of refuge. I mean, uh, if there was a, uh, somebody that had murdered somebody and, uh, and it was an accident, and uh, not murdered, I guess, an accident killed somebody, uh, they were able to go to the city of refuge. Now, if they were guilty, uh, they were uh, you know, killed. But if they weren't guilty, they had to stay in that city until the, uh, uh, the high priest had died and then, then they could go back to their place. But think with me, it would be a place of refuge for David later on. As he uh, reigned from there for seven and a half years, look in 2 Samuel chapter number five and verse number five. 2 Samuel chapter number five, verse number five. It says in Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. You know, this was a place of refuge for David. When David would go out, he'd come back to, uh, to Hebron. Uh, that was, uh, you know, I, I like home, amen? There's no place like home. Anytime I, I leave and, and go someplace, I'm always thinking, hey, I want to get back home, amen? And you and I need to realize, hey, uh, we, uh, uh, we can have a place of refuge. But the Lord wanted to remind David that he was in a place of refuge, a place of safety, because that is where the Lord had led him to be. The Lord had led him. Remember, he said, where should I go up? Go up to Hebron. Remember that? And it became that place of refuge for him. By the way, when you inquire of the Lord for your destination, the Lord will lead you to the place of refuge, that place of safety. Amen? The problem is so many Christians, they're, they're looking for safety so many other places rather than saying, hey, I need to find it in God's house. Amen? It will cause us to be in the right place and, and it'll teach us to, to uh, uh, you know, rely on the Lord, to, to uh, uh, wait on the Lord and, and say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to just uh, wait upon you. Look with me, if you will, real quick. Like, keep your finger there in 2 Samuel. We'll come back to it here in just a moment. But look with me, if you will, at the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter number 27. Psalm chapter number 27. And I'd like to look at all these verses, but I, uh, I'm not going to look at all of them. We're going to look at verse number four and five, and then we're going to skip down to verse number 14. Actually, let, let's, let's back up just a little bit. We'll read the first five verses there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my, my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though uh, war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that, that uh, will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and then to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his uh, tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall uh, set me up upon a rock. Then uh, skip down to verse number 14. Notice what he said there. 
He said, wait on the Lord. He, be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, what? On the Lord. You know the problem is so many Christians, they don't wait on the Lord. They're, they're uh, impatient. They're looking uh, for direction, uh, or des- their destination from somebody else and, and uh, something else rather than inquiring of the Lord. Oh, he inquired of, of the Lord for his destination. Number one, he inquired of the Lord for direction. Number two, he inquired of the Lord for destination. Number three, he inquired of the Lord for deliverance. He inquired of the Lord for deliverance. Look back in our text there in 2 Samuel chapter number 5. 2 Samuel chapter number 5. And notice what uh, it says there in verse number 19. 2 Samuel chapter number 5, verse number 19. says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the, the Philistines into thine hand. You know, he had learned uh, that God had given him the, the victories in the past. You know, remember, uh, remember when... Uh, uh, David faced Goliath. Remember that? And he, uh, uh, the Lord had, uh, you know, led him to pick up five smooth stones. You know, people have asked, why did he pick up five smooth stones? Why, why five? Well, there was Goliath, but Goliath had four other brothers. Now, I'm not going to uh, talk about them tonight. That's, uh, that, that'll be for a different message. But, but uh, there were five brothers. And you ever, you ever uh, seen, uh, uh, you know, I know my brother and I uh, growing up, we, uh, uh, we were always uh, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, protective of one another. And we had a neighbor kid that uh, would try to beat up on one of us. And, and if uh, uh, that neighbor kid tried to beat up on one of us, the other would try to help and, and uh, try to stop him. And, and, uh, and you remember him? Uh, Tim, Tim Mayer uh, was our old neighbor. And, uh, but anyways, uh, uh, you know, when, when you think about it, as far as David fighting Goliath, if uh, his brothers would have known that David was fighting him, don't you think that his brothers would have came after him? Of course, we know later on they do, Amen. But certainly, uh, we know that uh, David, he had fought uh, Goliath. He came to uh, Goliath and he said, hey, uh, I, I'm, uh, uh, you come to me with uh, spear and, and shield and sword, and I come to you in the name of the Lord. Remember that? You know, and too often in, in, uh, in the Christian life, we, we try to go uh, in that, our own strength, that spear and that shield and that sword, when we ought to be like David and say, Lord, I need your direction. I need your strength. Lord, I need you to fight this battle for me. Amen. But David knew about past victories. Look with me, if you will, at 2 Samuel chapter number 5, verse number 10. It says, and David went on and grew great, and the, uh, and the Lord God of hosts was what? Was with him. You know, God began to bless David, and we see him uh, having victories at, uh, over his enemies. And if you were to look at uh, the scriptures here, because of, because, again, because of time, we're not going to look at all of it, but uh, if you look at uh, verse number 23, it says, And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, uh, Thou shalt not go up, but uh, fetch a compass ab- uh, behind them, and come upon, uh, upon them over against the mulberry trees. And so every single time he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, uh, what direction would you have me to go? Lord, I want to, uh, you to deliver and the Lord delivered him every single time you know the Lord will deliver us in our time of trouble learn to acquire of him what to do in order to have deliverance though you know you can have deliverance from sin you can have deliverance from self you can have deliverance from uh, from Satan deliverance uh, from your trouble or your fiery trial that's available only through the Lord, amen. You can't uh, get yourself out uh, of your problems. You, uh, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't exclude God from everything, every part of your life and then just say, okay, I'm going to show up at church on Sunday or, or maybe Wednesday night or whenever I feel like it and, and then I, wanna, I want God to bless me. Look, make God part of your life every single day, Amen. Then it'll be easy for you to inquire of the Lord. Lord, what would you have me to do? Lord, what direction would you have me to go? Lord, what would you, what, what, where, where, how, Lord, I want you to deliver me and watch what God will do. God will deliver, amen? 
Look with me, if you will, real quick, like back in the book of Psalm again. Psalm chapter number 31 this time. Psalm chapter number 31. And in Psalm chapter number 31, notice in verse number one. Psalm chapter number 31 says this. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. But uh, be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and what? Guide me. You know, God wants to give you deliverance, but sometimes you have to ask for it, amen? You have not because you ask not. He inquired of the Lord for deliverance. Number one, he inquired of the Lord for direction. Number two, he inquired of the Lord for destination. Number three, he inquired of the Lord for deliverance. But lastly, number four, he didn't inquire of the Lord to destruction. He didn't inquire of the Lord to destruction. Look with me, if you will, at 2 Samuel, chapter number 6. 2 Samuel, chapter number 6. And notice with me there, beginning in verse number 1. And David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from, uh, 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 I can't even see it, my eyes right now. Wow. Oh, uh, Baal of, of Judah. There we go. To bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by, thy na- uh, by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of uh, Abinadab that was in Gibeah, and Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of uh, Abinadab, drew, uh, I'm sorry, drave the new cart, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of the Lord played uh, before the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, uh, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacor's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the uh, uh, oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God uh, smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah, and called, uh, he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, uh, pla- uh, 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 Man, I lies my eyes today. Uh, I can't see if that's a plow... plow uh, Huh? How? There we go. I'm sorry. How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? My eyes today, I apologize. How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? You know, David didn't even seek for direction from the Lord. He didn't say, hey, Lord, how would you have us to take up the ark? Remember, the ark of the, go- uh, the, ark of the covenant was a, a picture of the presence of God. Amen. There were some rules at, uh, of how it was supposed to be uh, carried. Uh, there were some uh, uh, directions of, as far as how they were supposed to, uh, you know, uh, uh, there were supposed to be some priests. They were supposed to carry it on staves. It was supposed to be the Levites. They were supposed to carry it upon their shoulders. Uh, they were not supposed to put it on a cart. Remember, they were, uh, uh, they, the ark of God had been gone out of uh, the, the, uh, 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 the presence of the children of Israel for some time, and And uh, finally, David's like, hey, we need to bring it back. Amen. But never once do we see here in the scripture, David saying, hey, Lord, how would you have us bring this back? Instead, he did exactly what the Philistines had done. They had put it on a cart. They had brought it with some oxen. So he thought, hey, that's how they got it here. Hey, we'll just bring it back to Israel that way. We'll bring it back to Jerusalem that way. He didn't ask the Lord how to bring back the Ark of the Covenant. And by the way, if he had asked of the Lord that, the Lord would have told him. But sometimes we don't inquire of the Lord decisions in our life 
and it eventually brings destruction in our life. I've watched time and time again where I've watched people don't make this, they make decisions they don't ask the Lord. I, I hear people say, oh, I prayed about this. There's no way in God's green earth you can tell me that somebody prayed about something and made a decision as foolish as they make. Amen? You could never convince me of that. But I've watched time and time again where people say, hey, I'm making this decision. They didn't pray about it, but they make the decision. And then I sit back and I watch and it's like, okay, one day this will lead down a path of destruction. And it's sad, I, you know, I, I just wish some people would just prove me wrong and just say, you know what, I'm just going to inquire of the Lord, I'm just going to do right, I'm just going to follow God, rather than saying, well, you know, I inquired of the Lord, but they didn't, amen. And then they end up going down a path of destruction. It always happens. It, there's, there's a principle in God's word, Amen. We must learn to have, uh, to, to learn, we, we must learn to bring every single thing before the Lord in prayer. Whether it's a battle that we're facing or sin that's easily besetting us, and we need to be willing to say, Lord, I need your direction. I need your deliverance. Lord, I need your, uh, I, I need to know where you want me to go. If we don't inquire of the Lord, it will surely be to our own destruction. Look back in our text there, if you will. 2 Samuel chapter number 6. Of course, we read about how David, uh, and he said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to us, uh, come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him, unto, into the city of David, but David carried it aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertaineth unto him because, the ark of God, uh, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And it was so that when they uh, that uh, boy, bear the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed oxen and fallings. By the way, if you notice there, it's exactly how they were supposed to bear it in the first place. Amen. The ark, it was a sign of God's presence, as I mentioned. We don't need a sign of God's presence today as he indwells in our heart, amen? But just because he's in us does not mean that we don't need to ask him and inquire him for direction, for destination, or for deliverance. The problem with too many Christians is that they get, get going along and they think, well, you know, I've asked the Lord in the past and it's okay because I've got this. I got this figured out. Christian, it is so dangerous to be in cruise control as a Christian. Amen? Years ago, I was driving and uh, driving truck and, uh, well, I'll give another example, actually. This was years ago. Uh, I would have been about uh, 17 or 18, something like that. Uh, my brother Todd was with me. We were, uh, we'd gone up to Camp Chatech. Todd, do you remember this one? We'd gone up to Camp Chatech, and we were driving back, and I set the cruise uh, in my car. Do you remember that? Do you remember what happened? I fell asleep. Yep. I fell asleep and, and uh, started going off into the median and Todd's like, Tim, Tim, wake up. Why? I was so tired, but I thought, I'll be all right. I'll just set my cruise and it'll be okay. Christian, listen carefully. Don't go in life. Don't go through life in cruise control. You'll lose control every single time. And it'll be to your destruction. That's exactly what David did. He thought, hey, I got this figured out. I've already done this before. Hey, I can do this. Christian, you and I need to be willing to say, Lord, I need to inquire of you. Oh, inquiring of the Lord. So let me ask you this. We follow the good example of David. When he asked uh, the Lord for direction and asked the Lord for uh, destination and asked the Lord for deliverance. Or are you going to follow his bad example 
when he didn't ask for and inquire of the Lord, and it was to his own destruction. You see, if you want direction, inquire of the Lord. You want destination, inquire of the Lord. If you want deliverance, then inquire of the Lord, because he'll surely answer you every single time. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. In just a moment, I'm going to have Mrs. Sella come and play a hymn of invitation. If you're here tonight, you say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart during the message tonight. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. Yes, thank you, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. We slip them down. Pastor, there's some things I need to inquire of the Lord about. I haven't been. I've, God spoke to my heart about that. Would you pray for me? Is anybody like that here tonight? Yes, thank you. Thank you. We slip them down. Anybody else? Pastor, pray for me. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor, I don't even know if I'm saved. I'm not sure if heaven's my eternal home. But I'd like to be sure. Pastor, in this brief prayer, would you pray for me? Would you indicate that need just by slipping your hand up and slip it back down? I'll see your hand. God knows your heart's need. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. I want to invite you to come talk with the Lord. Come and do business with him. Won't you come? Won't you come? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to hearts. Bless now this invitation time. Lord, I pray to be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone stand to their feet. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Nobody looking around. If God's